so Pierre asks, I'm sorry, I had a covered call on MSFT on Microsoft. And I think this is actually a question that uh, I was going to address a little bit too. It was from a conversation we had this week uh, on the phone. And you had it expiring today at 290. What is happening to MSFT? Okay, so Pierre was in a covered call, owned shares of stock, and it sold the 290 call for today's expiration. And the stock jumped $7.59 today, about 2.5%. This is actually going to help with the other conversation uh, that we had there, a question that came in from Ravi during this week. Same stock. Okay, so we jumped up 256 today. What is happening? Pierre wants to know. Thanks. So he likely got a sign if he didn't have to roll that covered call position. Why did Microsoft move up 3% today? Well, I don't know. I haven't looked at Microsoft. So if I have a question, you'll be tracking this in your portfolio, Pierre. So in the portfolio tool, we'll see the covered call and we can use these links. I don't have that in my portfolio right now. If we could put it in, take a look at it. We might just take a look at it, Pierre. But when a question comes in during a coaching session or during one of these webinars and I get asked a question, what is going on with my stock? Well, the first thing I do is I put in the stock symbol here and I click on the quotes link and that takes me to the basic information for this particular stock. That's how I noticed that this here, I'm sorry, that the earnings were in effect and dividend was two days ago. So that didn't affect the move today. And John's helping us out with this one. The next step I'll do is say, okay, well, has this been a sudden move? As I'm talking to Pierre, I haven't looked at Microsoft. I do know that it was at 296 the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact, but I'm going to go to the charts first, just see what the jump was today and had that big sudden move today, 3% or so. Okay. So I know it was just a today movement. Then the next step I'm going to do, we're going to be back here on the quotes page, or you could use these same links, Pierre, from the portfolio. We're doing our own research here. And I would just go to company information and I'd go to news. And this just brings up your basic Yahoo link here. And you've got some basic stocks. And uh, there's the first link. Microsoft is as higher than this. Microsoft spiked on news while Intel stock slipped. So just click on that. And it's uh, IBD. So I don't know if they're going to ask me to subscribe. Let's just see here. John gave me the answer, but I'm just showing you the links that I would go through. Thank you. Okay, Microsoft spiked the news that it will hike the cost of Office 365 subscription. Bummer. But that's exactly what John just told me. They announced a price increase for Office 65 suite. I say bummer because, yes, I think right now I'm paying $99 a year, which isn't too bad. But $99 a year for the access to the Office suite, that fun stuff we do with all the slides and everything that we've been doing in that case. So this is the sudden reason for the jump here. Now. Let's go back to power options. Now that we know the answer, John helped us out with that, but we saw the path that I would use to navigate to this. I'd see the change, see if earnings was an effect or maybe the dividend, which might have a little bit opposite effect. It might've dropped by that 56 cents, but that was not related. It was something else. So then we link to the news. As you're tracking your covered call position in the portfolio, I don't have it again, but just as I'd be tracking a stock or a covered call or a long call, I'd go through the same links. I'd go to charts, go to big charts, see what the jump was. Then we'd go right into company information and news here from Power Options to see what was going on. If I didn't find anything on the news, I, I'd keep hunting a little bit. But as John pointed out, that was the big news, and that was the first link we had, Pierre. Now, on that note, I'm going to enter something. I'm going to enter a covered call, excuse me, here on our little fake portfolio. I don't know the exact prices. This will not be exact. But I'm going to go ahead and put in that sometime in August, we bought 100 shares of MSFT. I knew the price was bouncing around 292, 296. We're going to call it 292 was our price per share on around the 10th or 11th. 285. Okay, so thank you, Pierre. 285 for Pierre. And we sold today's August 290 call. You did say 290. Yes, you did. Okay, 290 call. We'll just put in the same date. Um, uh, three dollars, Pierre. Three and a half, maybe. Um, Two fifty. I don't know. I'll just put in. Uh, I'll just go ahead there and put in three dollars. Well, maybe, yeah, that's about right. Three fifty. I was right. It was very close. All right, three fifty. Thank you, Pierre. Okay. Why am I going through this process? Here's my covered call entered as a linked position. You know, we own the shares at two eighty five. It's now at three o four. 
we sold the 290 call. We got a nice return of 350. Original expected max return is 3%. If we're assigned, uh, if we were assigned as maybe Pierre was say, it would be 3%. Um, and right now, of course, the max expected return because it is on assignment is 3%. What I probably would have done in this case, if Microsoft's plan for me, my portfolio is a long-term holding and I didn't want to be assigned, I would have set an alert by going to the alerts column and clicking on view for the Microsoft position. And I likely would have set an upper stock limit of maybe 291 or 292. I'll say 292, let it go a little bit in the money. Um, so I don't want to buy it back necessarily right at the money because that has the highest time value at the time. So I maybe want to go a little bit in the money, but I could set it at 289 if I was trying to buy it beforehand, 1% rule, things of that nature. I can also set alerts if the you know time value reaches a certain price for the option. If I'm within two days to expiration, the whole position increases or decreases, the stock drops below a 20-day or 50-day moving average, for example. We're just going to focus on the stock price for this position. Set my alert to be notified, and then we'll save alerts. Now, of course, the alert triggered because the stock's trading above 292. Would have triggered this morning, of course, might have been at 305 or 306 before it pulled down a little bit. Well, what am I going to do now? Can I get out of this position now when I was looking to make 3% for maybe a 15 to 20 day trade, but now I'm forcing, well, I'm being faced with assignment. Can I roll it out to potentially increase the profit to match my trading goals? And what are my trading goals? My trading goals might be to look for a two, two and a half or 3% return every 30 days. Let's say 2% every 14 or 15 days. I'm at 3% right now. Are there good rollout opportunities to stay in the stock that still match my potential return? So what we'll do now is go to position actions and position analysis from the power options portfolio. I see my current position. Yeah, time value left in price, nothing because it's at expiration. Um, this here liquidation at 3.1, we know would be assigned for 3%. But let's say this was an hour before close, half an hour before close. I scroll down below and I see the potential rollout opportunities. And of course, we want to keep in mind what was my potential target. Well, my potential target was to make two to two and a half percent every, let's say, 15 to 20 days. Okay. So I'm currently at 3%. I could roll up to the 305 call. Now, this would be done at a debit because it's going to cost me a fair amount. Remember, we're at 290 and the stock's at 304, 30, 304, 20. And I'm going to have to pay that money to buy this back. Now, I can potentially roll for a credit still in the money. There's some down here. Here's the September 295, 28 days out. Buy it back for 1423, keep our 350. Get 1250 for the new call, so we have an adjusted credit of 178, but this only increases my return to 4.2%. That's only plus 1.2% for 28 days. That does not match my trading goals at all. Okay, so let's just clear that out now. We know we're looking for two to two and a half percent. We're still maybe bullish on the stock. So if we go up to the 305, we'd only gain 1.6 for 14 days. That's not going to cut it. We could roll up to the 310, and that's 5.6%. So I'm currently at three. That does match the two or two and a half for 14 days. Now that's max if it goes up to 310. But the problem here with the roll is I'm doing it at a debit. I'm increasing my cost basis on this position, which means that if the stock pulls back, I could have more losses on the trade. But if I'm still bullish and I want this to be a long term holding, still continue to get the dividend in that scenario, of course, and keep trading out of the money calls. This might be a possibility that if I do get assigned in 14 days, I'm still meeting my two, two and a half percent target goal for that covered call. Increase above what I have right now by just letting it be assigned. Of course, I could just be let it be assigned if it's not a cash implication, if it's in a protected account, and just buy it back on Monday and look for a new call that matches my criteria. Of course, you can do it that way too. Going 21 days out, it only moves up 0.3%. That 310 call, 
for the 10th of September does put us at 2.9, almost 3% increase, but that's only 0.3% more than just going 14 days out to the 310. Be tempted maybe to stay there if the 2 to 2.5% were my goals. So that's how the portfolio can really help you in these situations, not only tracking it, getting the alert when it's triggered on your covered call position, but then evaluating the position here to see which one still matches your trading plan to roll the position in your desired time frame. Or if you want to roll specifically for a credit, you can scroll down to see which ones we'd be able to roll for a credit. Unfortunately, we have to go out to October 1st. Ah, we're still in the money here. There's nothing out of the money that's allowing us to roll for a credit until, what, December? Ah, November's. The November 305 would roll for a credit to 235, but that's 91 days out. In this case, I might want to roll for a debit so that I can keep continuing the trade. Now, it's great to see things numerically, but as always, it's better to see them potentially graphically. So I can use that edit more information button here. Go to simulate trade when I see a rollout on my covered calls, long call positions, what have you. And we get a nice side by side comparison. On the left in red is my current position that's facing assignment today, in this case for Microsoft. And on the right in blue is what the new position would look like my new effective cost per share for rolling this covered call and the new potential return at the higher strike price as well. And if I decided I wanted to make this change to my portfolio, just down below here, we could go ahead and click that and it would take care of the roll for us. It would simulate buying to close our existing August 20th, 290 call for 1423 and selling to open the September 3rd, 310 call for 218. And then we could continue to track the position and I'd adjust my alert up to maybe 309, 311 or 312 if the stock goes above that price. Okay, so. That's what we want to talk about with the covered calls. Remember, when you see a stock jump suddenly, you don't know why. If it's in your portfolio, you can link right to big charts. If it's on your watch list, you can link right to big charts or the company information, news, and profile. Or you can input it here and go to that quotes page. From the quotes page, you could see data if it was a dividend, if it was an earnings, if you didn't already have that set in the alert, you didn't know when the earnings were. Or you can just look at the company information and news figure out why your stock jumped today.